I really wish startups would read up on expectations from VC, what it means to be VC back, what VCs expect right. from you, and rather than just go to meetings. So most of the investors, they've got their aligned thesis. Even if they are really passionate about, or they really want to devote time, or they spend time learning about that ecosystem pretty well. And when they find the right company, they really put in that energy into making it successful. One of the things I like to start start with to have a little bit of fun and uh, give some great advice as well is a segment that I like to call things you wish founders knew. Um, uh, things you wish founders knew uh, can be something that you experienced this week um, with a founder that you know was sending you a deck or in a conversation with you. But the goal is to you know give a little bit of advice on what you wish founders knew uh, that will help folks in the room because they're here looking for advice from VCs, looking to kind of hear some secrets to success. So uh, feel free to jump in. Who wants to go first? For me, I, I see a lot of sort of first time founders or very early stage deals. And uh, a lot of people don't research venture capital properly and aren't really ready for VCs, right? They go out and pitch and then try and figure it out the world out from there which takes a lot of our time. So I really wish startups would read up on expectations from VC, what it means to be VC back, what VCs expect right. from you, uh, rather than just go to meetings. Because uh, it's dreadful sometimes, to be honest, and uh, a, a waste of everybody's time. Um, so there's great books out there. Uh, I, I w I, I'm, I'm eager to teach uh, startups and coach them. Um, but please be aware of what venture capital means. What does venture capital mean? Who, who, who should be, who is appropriate? Oh, well, there, there's expectations from, from venture capitalists about growth, about, you know, why do we exist in the world? Uh, you know, we want to generate a return on our investment. Uh, we want your company to grow. We want you to use the capital to grow your business, not grow your own wallet. Um, there, there's a whole wide range of, of things why entrepreneurs aren't ready for feces. Yeah, and in, in that context, I don't know from Ananda's first fund was eight million in size. The second fund was that I was part of was twenty two and a half million, and the next fund is hopefully going to be about a hundred million and soon to be announced. So the difference is in what we're able to invest in from that twenty two and a half million to the hundred million fund. A is quite um, significant. So one of the things that you could do, that Alexander was, was saying, is just ask the size of the fund, you know, find out or do your research mm. beforehand, because those particularly, you know, if they've got smaller funds, so they're often called micro funds, I don't think um, 20 or 30 million is that micro, um, but those under the 30 million, they're not looking for quite the same thing as those with the 100, the 200 million funds, the expectations of, of what you need to achieve um, mean that, that some some industries, some sectors and the size of your vision, just, it doesn't mean that what you're working on isn't going to be amazing and impact loads of people, but our expectations on the returns are quite different. What does that mean exactly though? So once someone finds out the size of the fund, then what do they do? How do they know that they're appropriate for... Uh, a fund based on its size? Uh, well, if you've had a no and they've said that, you know, if you went to a hundred million plus fund and they said the size of your market isn't big enough for us, then go and try a 20 to 30 million fund and see what they say and if it's any different. Just wanted to add what, what Xander and Zoe were saying, right? It's a, it's a chemistry mix more than anything else mm. uh, between the founder and an investor. So, once you, once you take a check, you're into a long marriage which is locked up for at least I don't know, five to eight years, depending on the stage you're investing in. And that chemistry mix is has to be aligned with the vision. So most of the investors, they've got their aligned thesis, even if they are really passionate about, or they really want to devote time, or they spend time learning about that ecosystem pretty well. And when they find the right company, they really put in that energy into making it successful. It's a massive high commitment from their side, but equally, Founders should do their bit of research. I, I, I get, I receive so many emails 
Um, had somebody just Googled up Experian Ventures, I should not have received that email. But pre- people pretty much le- reach out to these massive list of thousand investors, randomly shoot out an email without understanding the context. So I think the targeted approach by founders um, of why this person or this firm would be a mix for me is, is a fit for me and why I will be successful and they will be successful with me uh, and on this journey together. They really need to answer that question before even they reach out to a potential investor. The more personal you make your sale, the better you understand your customer, the more successful you'll be. And the same applies to VCs. You're selling your company to a VC. So the better you understand the VC, the better you understand the vertical they invest in, and even the person that you're going to talk to, the more successful you will be.